I want to thank Noom for sponsoring this video. Last month, I finally got started on my quilt coat. Well, when I say started, I really mean that I got the tissue out of the package and prepared myself to do a full bust adjustment. And when I say prepared myself, I really mean I accepted the help of Kate MacGyver of the Confident Stitch to get the pattern fitted properly. How did it turn out? Well, stick with me and I'll show you how we did it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please click that subscribe button. When I decided that I wanted to make a quilt coat, I knew I wanted something more tailored. Over the years, I've realized that with my full bust line, the typical boxy style just make me feel like a blob. And a couple of years ago, I found this old Bella Duster pattern by Amy Butler and thought this will do the job. But I knew I would have to make adjustments to the pattern because of my body shape. Now it's been a while since I've done any garment sewing. I vaguely remember how to do a full bust adjustment with a dart, but this is a princess seam and it has a different procedure. Luckily for me, Kate MacGyver of The Confident Stitch came to the rescue, offering to help fit my pattern over a Zoom call. Kate is the owner of The Confident Stitch in Missoula, Montana. Not only does she have a store full of fabric and patterns, she also has a YouTube channel full of great info. I'll leave a link to that in the notes below. Before we had a Zoom call, she asked me to do the following. Measure my high bust line, which is measured high up on the chest, and choose the pattern size based on this measurement. Cut out my pattern on that size, and I use my paper scissors for this. And wear it curved like in the armholes to reinforce the tissue with tape. Now she did ask me to mark the seam allowance, but I ran out of time and it's a good thing because I had just presumed the seam allowance was going to be 5 eighths. Sometimes the ending patterns do half an inch instead of 5 eighths. Yep, you're right, half inch. Kate and I immediately hit it off. She was generous with her time, and most of all, she understood my postmenopausal body and all the changes that had happened to it, which made standing in my exercise clothing on camera a little less intimidating. First, she had me pin all the tissues together and try them on. What you wanna do is wrong sides together. First, pin the two fronts along the seam allowance. So I'm pinning right on the line that I drew. And you want the pins to point down so that they don't fall out with gravity. Yes, this was awkward, but I was gentle with the tissue and that tape really helped strengthen the edges. Oh, it's all coming clear now. <laughs> okay. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah. And so now you're going to pin the shoulder seams and the side seam. Because you kind of have to see how the whole thing acts as a unit. All right, look at you. So that is not too bad. Actually, turn around. Let me see the back. So put your arm down. The back is pretty darn good. OK. OK, so turn to the side so I can see your shoulder. Can you? feel like where the top of your shoulder bone is. I want you to take a pen and mark right there. Okay, you're good now. Turn toward the front. After looking at where I had marked my shoulder to the back, Kate wanted me to add one centimeter of tissue just at the shoulder and taper it down to the neck. And in the front, she wanted me to trim one centimeter of tissue at the arm and taper it down to the neck. I think we want to do this before we make any decisions about the bust point. Doing the forward shoulder is going to move the front down your body a little bit. Yeah, that Thank feels you. much better. Fixing the shoulders is just kind of magical. Another good thing about this method is that you kind of figure out how the pattern goes together. I'm going to mail you the book. When it comes, we should meet again. We're going to lower the princess seam and then we're going to try on the tissue again and see if 
that's all we needed or if we need to add some width. So in part one of the series, I shared that I was tired of being out of shape and I joined Noom to help get me out of my rut. So let me give you an update. First, Noom is not a diet. It's daily lessons based on the science of how your brain works and the why behind the decisions that you make specifically around food and exercise. I am in my third month and Noom has helped me identify where in my life I can make different choices. My first changes were to drink more water, walk a bit farther, and get more sleep. Now the daily lessons are teaching me how to eat less dense and less processed foods. So I'm choosing more vegetables and I'm switching out high fat proteins for nutrient rich ones. I'm also trying out strategies to control my sugar cravings. Noom also knows that many of my habits I've had for a while, like eating everything on my plate or always accepting food when it's offered. The daily lessons are helping me break these behaviors. And when I need to, I can ask my personal coach for guidance. I have lost 10 pounds so far, but for me, it's not about the number. I am looking for lasting changes to my overall health. If you would like to try Noom, click on the link below or go to noom.com slash just get it done quilts to take your free Noom evaluation. Before our second session, Kate sent me this book, which I read cover to cover. She also sent me this tissue paper and I grabbed these rulers from my ruler wall. I also purchased this large white pinnable board. I could have used a white folding board, but this is what my local store had. And this has the added benefit that I can cut on it with my rotary blade if necessary. At our next meeting, once we reviewed the pattern and what adjustments had already been done, we realized we had two adjustments to make. The first one was we needed to shift the bust apex down. The bust apex is the center of the fullest part of the bust. So we want to kind of figure out where the curve sticks out the most. Right about there, I would put a mark just about half an inch above there on the seam allowance. And once you've identified where it is, then you can shift it down and Kate walked me through all the steps to do that. And with that shift, you'll probably have a couple of openings that you can fill with tissue and tape. So you want a pin to kind of hold it in place before you start okay. taping, just to make sure everything stays super straight. And that, yeah, when you slide that in, then you're gonna want a pin again to make sure your cuts are on those lines. Seam? Yeah. Oh, good. So fast. Okay. Wow. Looking pretty darn good. I just want to add a little to the side panel. So, can you measure some width? Yeah, we're going to add a little width to the um, side front. And now it's time to do the full bust adjustment and it's all about the pivot points. So just be sure not to cut right through. You wanna pull the pieces apart to add the correct amount and rotate the piece back until it is parallel with the grain. Then make a cut at point three to extend the length so that both ends align. Then fill the space with tissue. Lastly, Kate had me cut in from just above the bust at apex. From the pivot point, we could tilt the whole top piece. Wow, that feels so much better. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Yeah, isn't that nice? So turn so I can see the front. There's enough room. The apex is pretty close to your apex. It'll move down a little in fabric, but it looks gorgeous on the side. 
Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well done. I am amazed at how it all came together, fitting so nicely. It has changed the whole project for me. Now the next step for me is to cut the pattern out of muslin. My whiteboard is made out of polyethylene and it's soft enough that you can poke pins into it. You can also use your rotary blade on them, but only if you use good technique, which I showed you in this video. You want your blade to be really sharp so it can just run over the surface with little effort. If you're clenching, you're digging, so be sure to relax. And because my pattern has princess seams, there are no darts to deal with. And when I sew my pattern pieces together, I remind myself that it's only half an inch seam allowance. I think this works. So I think this is all the fine adjustments that I need to do right now. It's gonna take me about two months for me to get all these pieces sewn and quilted. And it's at that point that I'll do the final adjustments. Is the muslin necessary to fit the pattern? No, but since this is the first garment I have made in ages, I want to get it right. I'm also going to be using a quilt as you go technique in the next step, and I can use these muslin pieces as backing. One of the things that Palmers and Pletch says is 25% of your time should be spent on fitting and preparing your pattern. It makes all the hard work pay off in the end. And it's a good point to keep in mind on any project. Thank you, Kate of the Confidence Stitch. I really appreciate all your help.